Hi, I'm Carly Graham from Music and Media at the University of Victoria Libraries, here to talk to you about audio recording methods. By the end of this session, you will be able to decide on the application of different audio recording principles and settings based on your specific recording needs. The library has high quality equipment available for loan. Why might you want to use high quality equipment? Better quality now will allow for lasting application in the future. You never know what you might need to do with your recordings at a later date. Also, high quality recordings are easy to decipher during transcription. Students may borrow equipment on a drop-in basis from the Music and Media desk at the McPherson Library. Roland and Morant's audio recorders, as well as external microphones, are due the next day at 3 p.m. with one renewal. You'll also want to grab a 4 or 8 gigabyte memory card to store your files because the recorders have no internal memory, and you can borrow your memory card for a week. You might also want to pick up a transcription foot pedal. Please make sure you know how to use the equipment, you know the exact due time for each item you borrow, and any associated fines that may accrue. Let's talk about how you can become your own troubleshooter. Think about what your successful finished recording will sound like and work backwards from there to set up your recording equipment. I find it helpful to think about an audio signal like flowing water through pipes. There are really only three principles that apply, and if you understand how they work together, you can overcome virtually any problem you might encounter. First, you need to turn on the water main to your house, or turn on the recorder. Press and hold the power switch on the audio recorder for several seconds to turn it on. If you're using an external microphone, it also needs power, and that power comes from the audio recorder. Turn the microphone switch to on and make sure the plug-in power switch is turned on on the back of the Roland audio recorder. Also keep in mind that an external microphone drains the audio recorder batteries more quickly, so plug the audio recorder in if you're recording for extended periods of time, or bring spare charged batteries if you're away from a power source. The next principle is input, or turning on the tap inside the house and getting the water flowing in the right direction. The audio recorders have input and output jacks, but they're not labeled as such. It's easy to think everything you plug into the recorder is an input, but in fact there are also outputs. If you think about the audio signal like the flow of water, you'll be fine. Microphones transfer the signal to the audio recorder, so you'll plug an external microphone into an input jack. On the audio recorders, this jack is labeled as a microphone jack. There is also a line-in jack to plug in any other input devices. If you want to listen to your recordings, the sound is flowing from the audio recorder to headphones or a speaker, so this is an output. You'll plug your headphones into the headphone or output jack. Inputs and outputs have associated level controls. You can increase or decrease the sensitivity of the signal flow, which is similar to adjusting the water pressure in your house. The volume controls allow you to increase or decrease the sensitivity of the output to your headphones, and the input controls allow you to increase or decrease the sensitivity of the audio signal being picked up by the microphones. Also on the back of the Roland audio recorders, there is a mic gain switch. Set it to low if you're recording voices or high if you're recording music. Let's talk about different available settings you can use based on your recording needs. On the top of the audio recorder, you will see two microphones. These are omnidirectional microphones, meaning they'll pick up sounds from all directions. And because there are two of them separated by space, they will create a stereo recording that recreates where sounds were generated. This is useful if you're recording a meeting. By placing the audio recorder on the table, you will be able to hear where each person was sitting at the table. If you use an external microphone, it is unidirectional, meaning it only picks up sounds from one direction, in this case from directly in front of the microphone. This is useful in loud environments when you want to isolate a single sound source. Not only is it important to do several test recordings before you go into the field so you are comfortable with the equipment, you must also test and set input levels immediately before you record. To do this, press the record pause button on the Marantz recorder or the record button on the Roland recorder. This allows signals to come in through the microphone, but the sounds are not being recorded. Instead, you can adjust the input level so the vis visualizer on the screen shows most sounds going to about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way up without going over or setting off the peak light. If you go over maximum capacity, it means the water is too strong for the pipe, causing the signal to be clipped, resulting in distortion. If you've got the input level maxed out, but the sound is still too low, try switching the Roland mic gain to high. However, if you've got the input volume very low, but the signal is peaking, set the input gain to low on the, on the Roland recorder. 
You may also want to periodically monitor levels during a recording, but make sure it doesn't distract the speaker and cause them to lose focus. You have several filters and limiters available. The one you might find the most useful is the low cut filter. Wind is picked up by microphones as a low rumble and can overpower a speaker. On the back of the Roland recorder, turn on, turn on the low cut filter to cut out low frequencies and eliminate this rumble. Be mindful that you're decreasing all low frequencies. Depending on the quality of recording you need and the length of time you'll be recording, you can choose multiple MP3 or WAV file sampling rates. The higher the sampling rate, the higher the quality, the recording, and the bigger the file is, reducing time available on the memory card. For speaking MP3 is just fine, and for music, choose WAV. If you want to create a new track while recording, on the Roland recorders, press the split button with no data loss. On the Marantz recorders, you need to stop the recording and restart it, so there will be some data loss. The benefit of a new track might make transcription easier, but it also might distract the speaker and cause them, again, to lose focus. Please remember to go in to record pause mode to set the levels first, but then please do not forget to press record again to actually begin recording. This is a very important step. It's an easy one to miss. Many of us have done it. But the impact of such a mistake is huge. You will not record anything. Always check the display to ensure the recorder is actually recording. To transfer files once they're recorded, use the USB cable provided to plug in the recorder into a computer and then drag and drop your files to where you want to save them. You can also borrow a memory card reader to connect your memory card directly to one of our multimedia iMacs. When transcribing, you can decrease the playback speed on the Roland recorders or borrow a transcription foot pedal which allows you to control forward, reverse, start and stop with your feet while you type with your hands. Please visit the Music and Media desk to borrow equipment or for more technical assistance. You can also visit the technology link from the Music and Media webpage to find other help videos from our YouTube channel. One you might find particularly useful demonstrates how to do basic editing in GarageBand, such as splitting clips to isolate specific sections of audio. Thanks for listening.